alumna, uh, Dr. Nekasan Rose, who is from Trinidad and Tobago, um, and is going to talk about um, a study that uh, she has done in Trinidad and Tobago, looking at uh, homeschooling. And I think that this is, for me, one of the uh, interesting examples of, of, of how looking at things from different contexts is, is really, really important to our wider understanding of certain concepts and certain principles. So without more ado, um, welcome and over to you, Neka. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, Rebecca. Would you be sharing or should I share from on my end? Uh, if you can share, that'd be great. If not, I can do it. Yeah, you can do it because I'm using another screen as well. So that would be good. Thank you. Thank you very much and hello everyone and thank you for having me. Um, today I am going to be reflecting a little bit on a study that was done in Trinidad and Tobago on homeschooling, really looking at the process of emergence and theory generation using constructivist grounded theory. Next slide please. In the interest of time I won't go through the objectives but I intend in the short space of time to cover five areas, really just to look at the broader study of homeschooling, look at a little bit about constructivist grounded theory, look at stories, look at emergence, and finally discuss the implications of the study. So this, next slide, please. Thank you. This presentation reflects on a study of homeschooling completed for my doctoral thesis titled, I Need to Teach My Own Children a constructivist grounded theory study of homeschooling in Trinidad and Tobago. And to just briefly provide you with the cultural and educational landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. This very small twin island state has a rich history that accounts for both its cultural and socioeconomic landscape. Its educational backdrop is inherited from the period of British colonial rule and remnants of what has been called a very competitive, rigid, selective, stratified education system remains. Attendance at mainstream school, whether it's public or private, is the norm from primary through secondary school. And really, as with any researcher, curiosity initially guided my interest in homeschooling. One, because within this context, homeschooling is not a term that's bantered about. Um, it's not really an educational option that most persons, really anybody, talks about. But I recognize that there were, in fact, persons who were homeschooling for a very long period of time. Um, and amidst hearing this, there was also this public growing dissatisfaction with the education system in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think more importantly to this particular research endeavor is that there was lacking research and scholarship in Trinidad and Tobago into any alternative educational pathways, and in particular, homeschooling. So the aim of this research really was to explore the growth of homeschooling and to develop a theory of the practice through the accounts of 11 homeschooling uh, parents of the Homeschooling Association of Trinidad and Tobago using the procedural guidelines of CGT. Next slide, please. A little bit about constructivist grounded theory. It is one of the more contemporary grounded theory traditions and as you may know, grounded theory is really an inductive approach to generating theory, not so much meta theory, but really just conceptual constructions of a particular phenomena. CGT, however, is really built on constructivism that moves beyond interpretivism, rejecting the classical grounded theory notion of discoverability in favor of a process of co-construction as integral towards that theory um, creation, sorry. CGT in essence is emergent because it is inductive, it is indeterminate and it's open-ended. And I hope that as I reflect on my own study of homeschooling, that you will see these concepts coming up um, as well. 
Kathy Shamazes, whose constructivist grounded theory approach I use, provides guidance in really making meaning from the data and rendering participants' experiences into readable, theoretical interpretations. And she talks a lot about treatment of the data and their analytical outcomes as an explanation for how researchers should undertake studies. Next slide, please. What therefore was my methodological approach to studying homeschooling? I talk firstly about Kathy Shamaz's methodological self-consciousness, which really requires us as researchers to examine ourselves in the research process and the meanings that we make and the actions that we take each step along the way. So really in essence, when Shamaz talks about how you treat with the data, I would say um, it's really how do you treat with the entire research process? Very early on in my research, I had to ask myself, what is data and what am I considering data in the context of this particular study? And I grappled with this and decided that I wanted to, or rather needed to present the data, which in essence was the homeschooling journey of these 11 parents, which discusses the very private elements of their lives, themselves and their children, and bring it to life through detailed storytelling. I understood that although homeschooling research was not new, that the novelty of this research in this particular context in Trinidad and Tobago, with the unique vernacular expressions, cultural nuances that were only and could only be understood in this context, required a very careful rendering of the data and in essence, the entire process of inquiry. And so presenting stories in the, the, at the level of detail that I decided to left an open-ended, and we see that we'll come back again, space for endless possibilities. And for me, if I'm thinking about it post-completing the research, that early decision was the beginnings of emergence. And so any sort of theoretical explanation that I would derive at the end would be really grounded in those narratives of those homeschooling parents. What you see on the screen are just one or two snippets pulled from my pulled, sorry, from my own dissertation that really I think captures what my methodological approach was. I saw myself as a homeschool architect, not one who was working alone, but really conspiring with all specialties of trades people. And in essence, this really speaks to that co-construction of constructivist grounded theory that you, the researcher, are very much embedded in the research but you are not just interpreting the narratives, you are part and parcel of it alongside your participants and really every element of the research. I am not just a storyteller. I'm not just distanced from the narrations, but I'm very central to the interpretation. So the ideas of reflexivity and positionality and owning my, my value system entering into this research was very, very critical. Next slide, please. I speak of encountering emergence very early on in my research, but it should be noted that emergence exists from conceptualization to completion. The entire process of inquiry is emergent. And I think the beauty of emergence is that it really gives rise to phenomena that has been studied um, in many contexts, but it gives it qualitatively new properties that shapes new conditions and new consequences. And the above quotes that I've put here on the screen surmise this idea. And so as a researcher, I had to become very comfortable early in my research, learning to tolerate ambiguity, because I would say it was quite a frustrating process when you have all of these stories and all of these narrations and really all of these puzzle pieces that don't feel like they are fitting. But a large part of that emergent process and a large part of allowing for those emergent categories to you know, organically come forth is about learning to tolerate those um, ambiguity, confusions, and puzzles, because that, in essence, is critical to the emergent process of CGT. So how then did I apply that concept of emergence in my own study of homeschooling? Next slide, please. Grounded theories are in essence products of emergent processes that occur through interaction. And so the idea of getting these emergent processes is recognizing the varying points of interaction that you have in your research. 
and interaction, not so much in the layman sense of how we understand interaction. Interacting with the varying levels of your research is really understanding how do you treat with it? How are you scrutinizing it? How are you dissecting it? And so you have, I, you see here at the top of the screen, researchers must be responsive in the field, asking what is happening here. What I've identified here on the screen that I've so neatly put, and I, I guarantee you that it's not that neat when you're in the throes of the research, are the various points of interaction and co-construction that I would have identified in my research. And for me, one of the first points of interaction, one of the first points where you see those ideas of emergence coming out is in the interviews with my participants. You have to ask yourself as a researcher, who are you as an interviewer? How are you approaching? How are you interacting with your participants? And so for me, I saw myself as an interviewer traveler, really bridging that gap between familiarity and ignorance. Familiarity in that I was a parent to a young child, but ignorance in that I had no idea of what homeschooling was about. And so it really positioned my participants and really the parents as the experts in the field and allowed for us to have that level of interaction and see how that co-constructive process takes place. Uh, your data, how you are coding, the process of coding and going back and forth between coding and interviewing, changing your interview questions, adding, removing, restructuring, all of that is you interacting with your data. And through that process, you are getting or should be getting some emergent categories, your literature. Very critical point of interaction where you are really reading your narrations and reading the stories through the literature and vice versa. And I put self last, but that doesn't mean that self is positioned last, but your consistent process of memo writing, your consistent process of really questioning yourself, your thoughts, what you thought about the interview, what are your thoughts about some of the emergent categories that you're getting is very integral to that process of emergence. And so co-construction requires recognition of those intersecting points. So the points of interaction don't exist in silos. The points of interaction are also not linear. They are very much interrelated and you keep going through this process, this back and forth process of interacting with it. Emergence exists in relation to the conditions of the research and also in relation to the standpoint of myself as a researcher. And I think that is critical. Next slide, please. How did those points of interaction that I have identified and that iterative process of treating with these points of interaction yield the theoretical frameworks um, that eventually emerged in my uh, particular research? Every stage of interaction, as you're engaging in that process of co-construction, you're engaging with deeper analytical levels that are moving you much closer to a theoretical explanation. And in my case, a much closer theoretical explanation of homeschooling in this instance. Emergence really plans for that unexpected and unanticipated, and it prompts very early analytical thinking and encourages the researchers, of course, to keep interacting with the data. What you see on your left-hand side would be some of my initial emergent categories that I would have, that would have been derived out of my coding process. And the bubble that's right above it, Shama says researchers have the flexibility to elevate the analytical level when the data calls for it. And I think this is exactly what happened here. What I recognize is that those categories that I would have initially come up with were capturing the, the stories of the parents, yes, but they were being, being presented in some very, very static ways, which really didn't account for the nuances of the journey of homeschooling that the parents really identified. What you see on your right-hand side is the way in which I was able to elevate the analytical levels, to move from very static categories into very open-ended reflective questions that really accounted for the contextual situatedness of the homeschooling accounts at, per the parents. Attending to what I heard was much deeper, much more critical and much more reflective. And so from the point of, of the researcher, these open-ended questions, and I think in keeping with the whole idea of emergence, really allowed for me to explore deeper what was happening here? What were these 
um, accounts of these homeschooling journeys really revealing in a Trinidad and Tobago um, context. And so those four reflective questions then served to anchor the theory and elevated my analytical level. Next slide, please. Becca, just to say that you have two minutes left. Okay, okay. two minutes. Okay, thank you. So, sorry. So what was the event? How did I move then from those stories to theory? What I recognize is that the narratives of the homeschooling parents embodied a very reflective and contemplative dialogue about doing education in a specific way. And much like the proponents of critical pedagogy who saw reflection as a path to liberated education and there being another place for the existence and development of liberating education in the intimacy of social movements, I then put into conversation the basic tenets of critical pedagogy and those very open-ended reflective questions of the parents to, uh, because the skepticism and doubt that surrounded critical pedagogy provided a useful platform for exploring the legitimacy of homeschooling in this particular context. Homeschooling therefore, what, I, what, what, I eventually, what eventually emerged I would say, provides a valuable space within which dialogue around transformative education can emerge. Next slide, please. And I believe it's my last two slides, if I'm not mistaken. What are some of the implications and conclusions? Kunzman and Geitha, who talk about the scholarship, all of the existing scholarship on homeschooling globally, ask, does the methodology explore the phenomena from a new and potentially illuminating angle? And my answer to that is yes. What I was able to do through the process, through the CGT process, and I think the concept of emergence and really letting emergence organically come out in the research is that I was able to put into conversation two areas that while they have separately been researched had not been put into conversation before. And so I think from an international perspective, the reality is that in spaces like Trinidad and Tobago, where homeschooling is in its infancy it really provides an opportunity for comparative studies. It also provides an opportunity to introduce the English speaking Caribbean into the discussion of homeschooling, especially because our socio historical context really provides a very unique platform for how education is done. And in essence, how homeschooling is done in this particular instance. And being very cognizant of the time I think I will wrap up here at this particular point in time. And I thank you for your time. And I guess we can take any questions that you may have at this point. Okay, thanks, th thanks, Neka. That was a really, really interesting um, presentation um, showing uh, how you were doing the study from um, a grounded theory perspective. And certainly one of the comments from the, the last event uh, two days ago was how um, methodologies or theories that have been constructed in particular regions of the world, what might be called Western Western concepts, whether they actually apply. Um, but I think that I think that what's interesting in your case is is actually taking um, a grounded theory approach. Um, I, I do think that you know because you're coming at that from the data, and you're thinking about it through your thinking perspective and philosophy, uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's an approach which actually starts to shift away from what might be regarded as, as, as more sort of Western style or Western approaches. Um, but I guess that we could, we could talk about that one for a long time, but I'm, 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 really, I'm really conscious of time. And um, I should also say that uh, actually I was, I was um, very pleased to be Necker's supervisor for the for the latter part of of her study, and uh, so this is um, this it it uh, and and a very really really interesting study from a from a theoretical and methodological point of view as well as focus. So, um, what I'm going to suggest is if there are any comments or questions, maybe you could take them via the chat, Necker, if that would be okay, and then we'd be able to to go on to the next presentation. But just to say thank.